We're going to be adding furniture in the interior of our house and to do that we really need to be thinking about how large a person would be at any point in that room. So to talk you through this, um, once you establish how large the person should be against the back wall, which is pretty easy because we know where the eye level is and depending on how large you draw the wall you have an idea that that person's eye level if they're standing is going to be somewhere between probably four and a half and five and a half or uh, maybe if it's a very tall person it might be six feet off the floor but that way you can kind of lightly sketch in a little stick figure as a reference for how large a person would be against the back wall and then it's just a matter of projecting the baseline and the top of that person's height out in perspective using your central vanishing point and then at any point along the sidewall you can slide him horizontally into the room to know exactly how big the figure would be at any point in the room. So that's what we're going to do. I just wanted to show you this diagram so you kind of ex understand what I'm um, explaining. You can see they even took one person and they like flipped him down <laughs> to see how big he would be if he were laying on the floor after they figure out how tall he would be if he were at a certain spot in the room. So it's a really easy thing to do and it's kind of fun to plan your furniture so that it fits the people that might be in that room. So to get started I ended up starting a fresh drawing and I'm going to talk you through how I'd like you to set this up before we start drawing and you should pause the video at that point until you get caught up with me. So what I did was I drew in my horizon line, my vanishing line, and then I put the central vanishing point in the middle and then I drew a pretty small rectangle around that central vanishing point. So mine is about three inches by five inches on a pretty large piece of paper. This is our 14 by 17 inch paper. So go ahead and get this all drawn out. Make sure that when you're drawing the corners of the room that you're using that central vanishing point. So remember it goes from the central vanishing point through the corner out, central vanishing point through this corner out. You know, each one of these must align with our central vanishing point. It's not just going to be arbitrary angles or you're going to mess your whole drawing up. So make sure that all of that is done before you move on to the next step. So once we know how tall we want that person to be, again, I sketched him in so that his eyes are right on our eye level. And I'm not going to grade you on how great your people drawings are, but if you draw a nice person, I'll, I'll be impressed. Once you've got his height, we can slide him along just like we slid along our the top of our doorway in a previous drawing and then we can use perspective to slide him along the side wall until he gets to the point or she gets to the point in this room where we'd like the furniture to be. So I think what I want to do is we want to kind of plan out a little table that we're going to be drawing and to do that we want to know where that table might hit um, on a person that's standing at that point in the room. So I've just kind of freehanded projecting his height along to the side wall where it hits this corner then we switch to using our vanishing point to extend that line that represents the top of the person's head out into the room a little bit further. So what we can do is at any point here, let's say we want to start a table down here somewhere, we could just find the point on the floor that we, we plan to start the table and if we were to extend the line up to the point where it touches the this line that represents the person's the top of their head that's how big a person would be if they were standing at that point so what you can do is um, you can even extend like the waist of the person out the knees of the person out if you want to try to keep him in perspective or in proportion you know this would be our both of those points. So if a person were standing against the wall here, you know, this would be approximate waist, this would be approximate knee, and feet would be right at this point where it hits the wall. So again, that's pretty loose, but it gives you an idea of how big a person would be. So then we could just, you know, slide that person into the room to have an idea of how tall our object needs to be. So if we're making a coffee table, maybe we want that table to be, you know, about knee height. If we're doing a big butcher block food prep table, 
maybe it needs to be closer to waist level. So we have an idea of where that needs to be now. So let's go ahead and make a table. I want this table to be maybe about, um, well, let's make a um, let's make a little bit taller table so we can see the legs. I was debating back and forth, but I think I'll make a taller table. So what I'll do is just kind of estimate based on how tall this guy is, approximately how tall I want the front face of this butcher block table to be. So we're going to make a really pretty blocky, um, simplified table. It will not even have a tabletop that extends out wider than the legs. We're just going to make it really kind of a chunky form. But I will draw the front surface of it first. I'm going to try to keep my verticals really vertical. I'm looking at my ghost grid underneath there. And I do, uh, I'm going to try to make my table completely to the right of the central vanishing point. It's possible to make a great big table, but we wouldn't be able to see any of the side of the table. In that case, we would only see the top of the table. So if you want to keep yours looking like my drawing so that you can follow along, why don't you keep your table completely to the right of the central vanishing point also. This bottom line should be a true horizontal line. Kind of estimating there. And for now I'm going to draw it as a solid line. We're going to be trimming it down in a little bit. So this is the front of our table. I'm going to make it extend back to our central vanishing point. So I'm going to connect all four corners lightly with a vanishing line. I'll make it a little darker if I know for sure where I want that top to be. This is showing the part of the table that's moving away from us into space. And from the last corner, so you'll have four vanishing lines. And then you have to decide how big you want the footprint of that table to be, or how big you want the table top to be. But they both need to be related to one another, so you can't have the legs extend way out beyond where the table top is. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the table top. We're getting pretty close to our eye level, so there's not a lot of the top that's going to show. Once you've decided where you want the tabletop to end, um, yeah, you know, I ended up having it hit right on the corner of my room, so I think I'm going to move it just so that it's not confusing things so much. Maybe I'll make it a little bit deeper just to pull it away from that, those other reference lines. So drawing this vanishing line back in a little bit deeper into space, and we'll make the table just a little longer than I had first drawn it. So that we can stay away from the confusing lines there at the corner. All right, we've got the tabletop, and if you really wanted to have the tabletop be wider than the legs, you're welcome to plan that out. But it's just a little bit um, trickier for this first assignment. So I, on mine, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. All right, I'm constructing this last bit of the table using. I know this has to be a true vertical, and I already have the reference for where that plane needed to happen. Uh, this is the corner, the back bottom part of the table. I'm going to switch back to my triangle so I can be a little bit more accurate here. And this is the hidden back part of the box. Um, and then if we did this right, these two should also align. The two corners here, they're pretty close. Look a little bit off. That's one of my verticals. Alright, so these dotted lines are showing the parts of the table that may or may not show in the final drawing. We've got to kind of see how things happen there. I'm going to erase these lines of the back wall just so that they're not in our way. Since now the table is in front of that. And let's go ahead and put in some blocky legs. So we started this process when we did the little tree, tree house, um, but we didn't really make individual legs. I'm going to make these super thick so that you can really see the construction. You can make yours thinner if you want to, but I'm going to make mine, um, well, pretty blocky. I'm going to make them about a centimeter 
wide. Try to make them both the same width and I'll make the top of the table pretty chunky too like it is made out of a big butcher block for cutting on. So you can make yours more delicate if you prefer. Okay, big simple shape. We're going to add the thickness and project that back in perspective like we did for our treehouse. And then uh, let's go ahead and choose how thick we want this first leg to be. And then we'll use a, a X trick to figure out how to make the back legs feel like they're equally large. So I'm going to um, just sort of estimate on this first one. And then once you get your first leg drawn, then you need to use perspective to get all the other ones to match. So don't just guess on the other three legs once you've drawn the first one. Let's actually have a system. So we know where the footprint of this first leg is, right? This little diamond shape is where the, that leg of that table contacts the floor. Since we know where this back corner is, we can extend an imaginary horizontal line across to find the footprint of this other leg that's close to us. So I'll draw that in with a horizontal line as a dotted line as well, since we wouldn't really be able to see that point where it contacts the floor. This would be the other edge of that. Um, now that we have this dotted line, that tells us where we finish off this front leg. It's going to be quite skinny because we're getting really close to the point where we are directly below the vanishing point. So things get skinnier and skinnier the closer we get to this central vanishing point. Now I'm going to also try to make sure that the thickness of the table on the side is as in proportion to the thickness that we see on the front. So I'm going to extend an imaginary line across until we hit this corner. And then when we go back in perspective, the side of the table should be exactly as thick as the front drawn in, you know, it'll be drawn in perspective. So it'll appear to get smaller, but it, it will um, look accurate. Now the tricky part is making these back legs seem like they've gotten small enough. So we're going to do it. We're going to do a procedure here. It's going to get a little bit complicated because we, we're getting a lot of lines in here. But we're going to use the X to find the center of that base plane, so the footprint of the whole table. So find the four corners, maybe give yourself a little dot so that you don't follow the wrong lines. And we're going to draw a light X to help us locate the center of the table in perspective. Remember you can never use your ruler to find that point by measuring you have to use the X when planes are moving away from us. So this is the center. Now I'm going to kind of diagram this out as if as if this whole table were just propped flat so that you can kind of understand what I'm going to do. So if, if we were looking absolutely at the top of the table, let's say this is the top view of the table in perspective. We've got the front two legs drawn and we've projected back the spacing for the back two legs, but we don't know where these lines are going to be yet to make sure that these footprints are in perspective to the ones that are up in front. So what we've done so far is we've, we've found the midpoint by drawing an X. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go from the back edge of the front. Which, so this arrow corresponds to this one. If this were top view of this table, we're going to go from this edge through the midpoint and continue on until we hit this other guideline and that will help us locate that one. And then once we have that we can just use perspective, a horizontal line to locate the other one. So to talk you through that again, the, we're just doing this whole thing as if it's been foreshortened now. So the first step is to you know locate your front two placement of the front two feet where they contact the floor, which is these little diamond shapes. Then you project the vanishing lines back so that we have the width of the legs, the back two legs, figured out. And then in order to figure out where this line is, 
we're doing sort of a double X process. So we, we did the first X just to locate the center, to get that center dot, which we've got now here. And then the next step is, instead of going from the actual corner of the, the whole table, we're shifting over to this point, which is the back edge of the front leg. You can choose either point, it's gonna work the same, but, and then, then we go from this point through the midpoint, and wherever it crosses this inner vanishing line is where the, the horizontal line needs to go for those back two legs. So let's go ahead and, and do it in our actual drawing. I'm going to zoom in a little bit if we can. Um, let's see if I can zoom with the... Get that moved over so we can see a little bit bigger as I'm constructing this. So we're going from this point through the midpoint and wherever it crosses this line is where so again, this is right here. And then if we go right through that point with a horizontal line way off on the so these little diamond shapes are the footprints of the back legs. So we know we've got the two sides here where they meet we need to add in that last vertical to, to create the second plane of that leg. Otherwise, it looks like it's just a flat piece of paper. It doesn't look like it has any depth. And then we can extend across a solid line here now. And this is the footprint of that back leg that's under the table. Now, if you're doing a low coffee table, it's possible that you may not be able to see the feet of these the back two feet of the object, but um, I do want you to s plot it all out anyway, even if it's being covered by the tabletop so that I know that you're able to locate those things. And then if you want to add a little bit of shading, try to help clarify the image, feel free to do that. A little bit of hatching. I try to keep the hatch marks as if they're also vanishing lines so that it feels like it's really on that side plane letting all those hatch march marks also lead toward that. And if you want this one to feel like it's back under the shadows, you could also add a little bit of hatching there too to kind of sink that back into the shadows a little bit more. But, um, but that's the essence of our table. It's a really simple blocky form, but once you know the basics of how to plot out these feet, then you can do more complex forms, more elegant looking chairs and couches and things like that. So I'm going to draw back in. I could see a little bit of the room, that back corner of the room here, and just add that back in because we're looking under the table at that. But um, we've got a table. <laughs>